I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. This is actually our last interview here in St. George. And as you may have heard, we are also, also looking for other cities that we might come to. And we have all the technical stuff. We just need a place and a few people to interview. So if you think you might be interested in that, please give us a call at, I think, 385-220-5111. And uh, last time we got to meet David, your husband. Yep. This is Sarah Conklin, and we appreciate you coming and Thank you. telling us what he missed. So, uh, <laughs> first of all, where were you born? Portland, Oregon. You were up there in Portland, mm -hmm. so that's where you eventually met, yep, right? That's so, where that, met. so you were there. And, okay, so and you, was your family active in the church? Yep, they were active. My, both my parents were converts as teenagers. Oh. And, um, but they got married in the temple. My dad went on a mission. Okay. Um, they got married in the temple. Stayed active in the church. Stayed active. And yes. we, uh, I have three siblings. I was going to ask you, yeah. who got, and are you the oldest? Or? I'm the youngest. Oh, you and the baby. And the, the baby. The spoiled one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, we were active. Yeah, my whole life. All the way through primary and all yep, the little primary, songs and everything. Uh -huh. And I think we mentioned last week that you were primary president, so you definitely know the songs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So young women, and you get into mm -hmm. that. And yeah, I was the president of all the, all the classes, classes yeah. and, and I probably some of my friends back then probably would have categorized categorize me as Molly Mormon, probably. <laughs> okay, yeah, probably. <clears throat> so you just kind of live life, and, uh, and you probably didn't get excused time during high school. Did mm -mm. you take early morning? I did. I did seminary? early morning seminary all four years. Oh, gosh. What time did, did you have to get up for that? Oh, I can't even remember, but it was early. Yeah, I'm going to guess, like, yeah. probably 5.30 or something. <laughs> yeah. And no question the church was true? No, no question at all. Okay, so what happens after high school? Well, my senior year in high school is when I met David. Oh, was it? Yeah. Now, was he in... Was and no, he he's in, a year... He was a year ahead of me. So he had okay. graduated. He was preparing for a mission. Okay. We met, started... I was a senior. We were dated. Okay. Okay. And, um, and I helped him. That's what uh, he said. Yeah. You filled out the paperwork. Because I... Because Let's I... Let's get him out of here. <laughs> yeah, because... Because I wanted to marry a return missionary, you know? So married I knew... And get married in the temple. And get married yeah. in the temple. So I knew... He needed to go, to and so, <laughs> so he, and so, so he I helped him and, oh, that's, do that. Yeah, and he left. And now, did you go to school? You went to BYU Idaho Ricks. Uh, yeah, was that during his mission? Yep, the the same two years that he was on his mission were the there. same two years I was at Ricks. And then you came back to Portland, and mm -hmm. he came home, and you got married in the Portland Temple. Yep. Okay. Three months after he got home. Oh wow! No, was it three months? <laughs> yeah, was it? <laughs> so he said something about dating. It was four a months. Lot. Four you, months. You yeah. Tested the waters out there a lot over in. Yes, I dated a lot at Rick's, <laughs> and too much. <laughs> I dated too much. Well, you found a good man. That's I for did. sure. That's <laughs> exciting. So then he he goes on on to school and stuff, and then eventually over to Creighton. <clears throat> in Omaha, yes. and you go, of course, with him. And, uh, and during that time, I um, I was in school too. We were trying to decide: should we start a family, oh, or should I, or should finish I finish school? school? And yeah. and I I prayed about it, and I felt like I got the answer to go to school. And mm. so and so we um, both during those right after we got married for the next four years, we were both in school. Oh boy. Um, and you got your, working and in school, both of us. You got your degree? Yeah, I got school? my degree at oh, Oregon State University. Oh. In the apparel Ducks? Design. Huh? Is that the Ducks the, or the other Beavers. One? That's the Beavers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's Oregon State. Oregon and Oregon State. Oh. 
And uh, so you work, and you he goes off to, or you go off to school after that, and um, yeah. Well, I after I graduated, I worked for a year um, at, at a children's clothing company. I was an assistant mm -hmm. designer. My major was apparel design. Oh, wow. And during that year that I worked, I was pregnant and okay. with our first child and then when I had her um, I quit okay and I got to be a stay-at-home mom which okay. I've been ever since which you, has been a blessing and, and you had two kids I guess when yeah so then we um, and then we had and then we moved to Salt Lake for like uh, two years yeah. and while we were there we had another child okay. and then we went to law school in Omaha yeah. and there we had two more kids okay and all this time, just whenever war, whatever ward you went into, you were just part of the new ward, and you just were accepted, and you yep. probably gave the <clears throat> talk that you required to give yep. when you move into a ward, yep. and then when you <laughs> leave the ward, you have to give yep. the farewell talk. Those were easy callings for the bishop to, yeah. <laughs> to do. We, we always did that, the new people, and get to know them, of mm -hmm. course, and stuff. So Yeah, and I was called as primary president right when we moved into that Omaha oh, ward. Oh, were you? So for that three years of law school, I was primary president. Wow, the whole time. Mm -hmm. And just no question the church is true in your no mind, No question right? at all. You're just working your way. And I prayed as a teenager yeah. if it was true, and I had yeah. an experience that I counted as. Felt as a burning in the bosom and stuff, and just knew yeah. it was true. You also mentioned earlier that you had a little feeling about polygamy back in your teenage yeah. years. What, yeah, so when what I was, was a teenager in, in one of the young women lessons, the, the teacher was teaching, telling us about polygamy and, <laughs> and uh, you know, and I learned that Joseph Smith did it and, and I remember sitting there in that class learning about it and feeling really sick to my stomach and, <laughs> and it really disturbed me and I, it scared me. I didn't want to, like, <laughs> I was you like, I don't want to, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to have to do that. But I shelved it, you know, I did sure. the, I did the whole thing where, you know, they say, when we die, we'll have a perfect understanding about it, so we sure. don't have to worry about don't it. Have to worry about it. <laughs> you know, so I just relied on that for many years, but mm -hmm. it did cause me a lot of turmoil and anguish, especially in the first several years of our marriage, because it caused me to have a lot of jealousy feelings. Um, just that it could happen. Yeah, and yeah. and it, it and and. I actually, for for a long time, I prayed to God, asking Him to help me understand it and help me to accept oh. it. <laughs> and He didn't. Oh, darn! He it. did not. He, I, for a long time, I just prayed, please help me to accept it and understand it and yeah. just be okay with it. And He didn't. He did not give me that. And so then I changed my prayer, and I prayed and asked Him to let me just stop thinking about it. And oh, he, did. And, he did. And then I. He, I, it was amazing because I used to just think about it constantly, and then once I prayed that, yeah. it was awesome. And when you look he back now, you probably think, you know what, God loves me. Yeah. He did. Whether, whatever, wherever I was at, God loves me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, so you come back to Salt Lake after school, yep. right? And you lived there for, how long did you live in Salt Lake? We were there for here? Uh, ten years. Ten years. Okay. And so. Uh, yeah, we were there, and um, for the first s several years of being there, I worked in the pri in the nursery. Okay. And then I was called as primary president again, <laughs> and was primary president for four years that oh time. Oh goodness! Okay. <laughs> and well, so so, so th what happens to him happens in Salt Lake, mm -hmm. and does he tell you initially about this, about his experience and what he's kind of thinking? Um, yeah, he does. Um, in the beginning, he he would he was telling me about uh, him reading the Bible and and his new understanding of of grace, and he would talk to me about it and like teach me the things that he was reading, you know. And I thought it was great. I I I had not, I didn't have an understanding of grace, and I I can even remember about a year prior to this whole thing starting, sitting in a Relief Society lesson. And somebody made a comment about grace, and I remember sitting there thinking, 
I don't really know very much about grace. I want to understand that. I, I should research that. But then it, it just then ended there, and I didn't. It. You know, yeah. it just was like that. So when he started researching it and telling me about it, I was oh, like, oh, well. that's awesome. Like, yeah. that makes total sense. Yeah. I, I like that. Isn't it interesting, though, that you've been these many years and probably really didn't understand yeah. grace, mm -hmm. which seems like a basic yeah. thing now. But, uh, yeah. yeah, we just don't talk. Uh, Mormons just don't talk about yeah. grace much. Yeah, so then, he, and then when he started doing more reading, he started reading a lot of yeah. just hundreds of pages of different things and yeah. and started telling me the things that he was learning and how some things didn't add up. And there this was, was a little fearful for you? Yeah, it was fearful for me. I, I, it, started, it started to scare me for sure, and I would, and he would, he would tell me about it, and I'd say, that's great, that's fine, but we're not leaving the church. We're not leaving. <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> yeah. And he'd say, no, no, we're not. No, uh, it's, well, no. and he was trying to prove the yeah, church true. Yeah, he was trying to prove it tr true. So and he, he could say that to you. Well, no, I'm just trying to prove yeah. the church true. But yeah. keep running across things that don't make sense. And yeah, then, but okay. as he kept learning and kept sharing, sharing with me, <laughs> I it, it did it did scare me, but it started to feel like I wanted to learn more. I started kind of craving it and like craving the things that he was learning, but I was still scared, yeah. you know, because I didn't want to leave. Were you reading much? I mean, you've got eight yeah. children. Yeah, so <laughs> I was not reading. reading? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wasn't reading nearly as much as him, but I do remember one time when he when he was in the Bible. And he was learning about, um, and, he, and he was learning about grace and and um, and all that. He challenged me to to read it, to read like a section. There was a section that really impacted him, and he yeah. challenged me to read it. So I did, and yeah. I was like, oh yeah, he's he's right. <laughs> like that's totally true. Never heard that. <laughs> yeah, like I yeah exactly. I was like, yeah. well, that's. So what happens kind of with you and him as time goes on? So then. Um, so then he, so yeah, I kept saying, we're not leaving. He's like, no, we're not. But then we started uh, just, we just kept talking about everything. And we had some friends that, that we would, you know, mull over all these things with. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and we started watching Ex-Mormon Files. And, Did and you really? yeah, and I, I, lo I loved it. I, I, when I would watch and listen to people's stories, it just felt like, it just felt right to me. It, it just, I, I mean, it, you I just could, loved it. it could I could relate. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's the right word. I could relate to it. And I, and I just craved to hear more stories. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to hear Praise people's God. stories and how they, how they got out. And I started like thinking, okay, well, I started to think, well, okay, if we did leave, how would we ever do that? Because all of our families, I mean, there's no, I would think there's no way we could leave because all of our families are, it would hurt them. Even that thought, though, is a big step, yeah. isn't it? Just like, well, what if we leave? Yeah. I mean, it's not, that's just something a Mormon just doesn't think. Yeah. If they're very active, they like, what if we leave? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I started realizing, okay, I can't rely on David, on what David's learning. You gotta keep I have to find out for myself. Yeah. So, so. Oh, I was just going to say, you eventually saw Carla's, my wife's oh, interview. Yeah. Was that during this time? Um, I think it was after. I think later. it was a little after because because th this is when I decided, okay, I can't just rely on what he's. You've got to do. I've got to do my own. I I have to find out for myself. Smart. And so I turned to prayer, prayer, reading the scriptures, and going to the temple <laughs> <laughs> to get my answers. And I. The first thing I did is I prayed and I asked God if the church was true. Yeah. And and I so I prayed that I ended my prayer. I got in my bed. I I read some scriptures and as I was turning my light off to go to sleep, I wasn't even thinking about the prayer I prayed because I knew that God would just answer it in His own time, you know. So yeah. I wasn't even thinking about that prayer anymore. But I reached over to turn off my lamp. And I, it was the first time I had heard like an audible, what people say, an audible voice. And I heard it and it said, it's not true. And that was it. And oh, I was like. You really did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was crazy. And I was flabbergasted. I was shocked. I 
I couldn't believe it. How long ago was this? <clears throat> that had to have been in like 2015 or 16. That, that recent then? Yeah. Okay. So then I needed more <laughs> answers. <laughs> and so, because I was still so scared to death to leave the church. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I loved everything about it. I loved the culture. The culture was everything. Sure. I just loved it all. And so, so then I, my temple recommend was about to expire. And I said, okay, I'm going to go to the temple one last time and see if I can get anything there that yeah. keeps the church true. Right. And before I went, I prayed and I said, please just, if, if the church, if, if the church is true, please just help give me something in the temple that helps confirm that to me or, you know, yeah, right. all that. So I went and during the whole time I was in there, during the session, everything, the, I just, all these thoughts kept running through my head that said, if, if God loves all of his children exactly the same, why would he make it so hard for them to find his truth in this little obscure church compared to the world, yeah. this little obscure church where you have to do all these requirements to get to him, why would he make it so hard? If he really loves us. If he really yeah. loves us, and I believe he does, you know, at the time, I, I believed sure. he did, sure. and he does, and I, and I thought, why would he make it so hard? Why would he hide it? Why would he, why would he make it so that it would, it would just be so difficult for everybody to find it? Oh, what a thought. And so, and then, so. And, the, and then I thought, well, it's in the Bible, and it's so it, it is so easy for people to find it because it's grace, and it's that's what yeah that's what you'd understood. That's about what grace. I ca yeah. yeah that's what I came to understand later. Well, I know so. we're probably going to be pressed for time here. There were a couple of two or three things that are you wanted to share with us. One was a scripture. Yeah. So this was my third answer that I. <laughs> so then I was at the point where I said to myself, okay, I got to decide if if I'm going to leave the church or not. Yeah. And so I, so I prayed again and I said, please, I said, Heavenly Father, should I, should I, I wasn't even talking about David or my kids, just me. Should I leave the, should no. I leave the church, the, the Mormon church, should I leave it? And I ended my prayer and I picked up my phone <laughs> and, and at that time I was reading the scripture of the day every day. Okay in the Bible. And here's what it said and as you finished praying. I finished my prayer. I picked up my phone to read the scripture of the day and this is what it said to answer my prayer of whether I should leave the church. It says, follow my... This is from Proverbs, uh, Yes, this is way. Proverbs um, chapter 6, verse 3 through 11. It says, follow my advice and save yourself for you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Now swallow your pride Go and beg to have your name erased. Don't put it off. Do it now. <laughs> Don't rest until you do. Save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter, like a bird fleeing from a net. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer gathering food for the winter. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah. And I was in shock. Like, I was frozen. I could not move. I couldn't believe what I just read. And Did you share this with I, David? I, didn't, I, <laughs> I was scared to share it with him because I knew what it meant, and I knew yeah. that he would be like, Okay, let's leave right now. <laughs> and I wasn't ready to commit to that That's yet. Such and a so, tough decision. so oh hard. Gosh. So I, it took me a couple weeks to share that with him, but I yeah. finally did. And and then that's when I that's when we came to the that's when I started thinking. Okay, maybe I could just believe that it's not true and still go. Oh. And then that's when I saw your wife's interview. Okay. Is I I thought okay I can just go to church and just believe it's not true and just not tell anybody and be and fine. just do both and kind yeah. of sit on the, okay. Yeah, so then I saw your wife's interview. And which, what impacted you about that? So I remember she was talking about, um, you know, that when she left, it impacted her relationship with some of your kids. Yeah. And that scared me to death. I did not want 
Here you've got eight children. I have eight children, and I did not want to ruin any relationship with with any of them. And I knew that if we had stayed and just believed, let them learn all about the LDS Church, even though we didn't believe it anymore, mm. that would be us lying to them. And I didn't want that. I didn't want them to to find out later that we were lying to them all those years, and then it ruined a relationship with yeah. them. So. We, so after I saw that interview with your wife, I just said, we have to leave. We can't stay. We have to, we have to do this for our kids. We have yeah. to be honest with our kids and, oh my goodness. and teach them what we now believe. Yeah. Again, big steps, a lot of courage. I'm proud of you guys. <laughs> Thank you. And I relate so much with it. Well, I know you've got a real special story that you want to share. And where did this, this story that you're going to tell, how did that come into to be? So, um, this is after all this. Yes, this is it? after all this. <clears throat> we, we had left, um, and people in our ward started finding out that we had left. And I knew I had a few close friends in the ward that I, that I wanted to tell through my own mouth that we left. You know, I didn't really want them to hear it through the grapevine. Yeah. And so, and so I planned this like dinner with them. Like we went out to dinner together and they were actually in my primary presidency. So we were, oh, yeah. but you know, we had been released, you know, cause but, we were already gone. But, you'd stayed together but we had stayed so close friends. friends. Yeah, yeah. We had stayed close friends and, but I wanted to tell them from my mouth. So, um, but, it, but I couldn't figure out how to tell them because he, because there's no way to say it to somebody where it sounds good, <laughs> where it sounds okay. It's just hard to say that, isn't you it? You just yeah. can't say, um, I'm, I left the church. You, know, you can't, it's just so hard to say it. So I, I prayed to God and asked him to help me figure out a way to tell them that they might understand why. Sorry, <laughs> it's an emotional story. We're all going to be crying in a minute. So. <laughs> and so I... God gave me this this picture in my head, and so I, when I went out with them, I, I shared this picture in my head um, with them, and and what it was is it was me standing in the middle of this house that I was building, and I I was doing all the work. I was I was building it myself. I was making it beautiful. I was making it exactly the way I wanted it to be. And I loved it. it. I was comfortable. It was awesome. And you're and, an interior designer too, <laughs> right? Apparel. But yeah. Oh, okay. But I, and there was nothing wrong with it. And then one day I noticed a little crack. And so I hurry and tried to fix the crack. And then as, a, as that crack was being fixed, I noticed another crack happening. So I ran over and tried to fix that crack. And then before I could finish fixing that, another crack happened. And then some of the walls started to crumble and and it all eventually all the walls crumbled and fell and i was left standing there just with my beautiful house all broken <laughs> all around me and i looked up and i saw jesus standing there and he had a chisel and a hammer in his hands and he was the one making the cracks in my wall of my house <laughs> and he said to me why are you building this house I have the most beautiful house for you right across the street it's all yours and it is already done I did all the work all the work is done I did it myself for you all you have to do is accept me and follow me and have faith in me and and it's yours all of it is yours I've done it all yeah Wow. And <laughs> wow, what an answer to a prayer that yeah. was. Were you able to share that with these girls? I did. I shared it with what them. What did they think? They, they, I think they liked it. They, I mean, you know, you never know what they're really thinking, yeah. but um, the reaction I got was a good reaction. Yeah. They didn't, you know, they didn't argue with that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they, well how can you argue? Huh? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it was fine. Oh, but. my goodness. Well, I know these are tough decisions we all make, to, and you've made, uh, you and David. What, were you able to share this with some of your family, and what have they said and done? Um, you know, I, not, sort of, not really. Um, it, it, it seems as though 
they all know. They all know that we've left. Yeah. But I've talked. I've talked to my parents about it. Um, but, and I've talked to a couple of my siblings. I haven't talked to all of my siblings, oh, okay. but just a couple. Um, but it's almost. It, it feels as though it's a scary topic for people to talk about it. They don't really want to talk about it's it. Like they an just, elephant in the room. Yeah, it? it is. Yeah. It's an elephant in the room. So, you know, I hope that someday I'll get to talk to them Will about it. Will they listen to this? I don't know. I, I Yours and David's uh, interview? I'm sure, I, well, I'm sure we'll send them links to these and <laughs> hopefully they'll hopefully listen they'll and, do it. or watch it. Oh, I just, uh, I've just been so full here this week, uh, weekend listening to some of these beautiful stories and yours is so special. And, and you just thought you were on the right path. Yeah. Right? Working our way to heaven and what a what a neat! I, I know David calls that a parable that you were talking about, but seeing Jesus standing there, realizing that He's uh, built this beautiful house for you already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what does Jesus mean now to you compared to Mormonism? Did oh, you understand Jesus as more as a Mormon? No, I I always loved Jesus, even as a kid. I had a great love for Him, but no, I did not understand. The Jesus from the Bible. No. And 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 once I did understand how once I understood the true character of Jesus and yeah. that he is Yeah. God. He is God. <laughs> that was like a huge wow moment for me. I was I was just like he God himself came down and I know. Died for for me. Yeah. He he took care of it for me. He wasn't my older brother that did that. He, it was, it was God Himself that. Yeah. I mean, that was. It made God seem so huge, like, way bigger than I ever. Did you? Do you and David ever stop and think what what just happened here? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> all the time. I. What What are we doing here? Yes, yes. But do you sense a freedom and a joy that definitely. maybe you never felt before? Oh, I don't definitely. Lead your, lead your comment, but. Isn't Definitely. there a great freedom? Oh, I remember going through this process. I started to feel that freedom feeling. Yeah. It was awesome. It was such a burden just lifted off yeah. once I and understood a, God. Yeah. And such and, a simple message. Yeah. It and, was And it's awesome. so hopeful. And we, we have such confidence now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was always, well, did we do enough? But now we have that confidence in what Jesus already did. Yeah. Well, I'm so grateful that you two are together in this, yeah, Me aren't too. you? Yeah, oh, yeah. And your kids have all come and they yep. enjoy going to church mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. What a blessing. Yeah. Well, thanks uh, so much, Sarah. You're such You're a welcome. sweetie. And we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. <laughs>